looking at um, a work by Robert Smithson, and it dates to 1970, and it's called The Spiral Jetty. This is a photograph showing it. it must have been taken from a helicopter. And it's what you call a work of environmental art or land art. It's essentially a bunch of dirt and rubble that's been pushed out into the spiral form into a lake, into the Salt Lake in Utah. It just exists in this one place and at this one time. So it's, mm -hmm. could we say it's site specific? Right, exactly. We call it site specific. One of the things that Smithson wanted to emphasize was a kind of a distinction between, you know, the site of the work of art um, and the traditional site of the work of art, which would be a gallery or museum or a private home, and kind of breaking down barriers, saying, you know, is a work of art only to be contained by a museum or can we also find it elsewhere? And so he's part of a larger movement of artists who are specifically locating or situating their work in the land. Um, and oftentimes the works have these very, very large proportions, like this juts out 1,500 feet into the water. So and can it's you really, walk through it? You can usually walk on it. Um, well, not necessarily. It depends on the height of the uh, water itself. So sometimes it's submerged. So this photograph shows that there are some people out on the jetty. Yeah, I see. But it's been slightly covered by water, sometimes it's lower, Salt. higher, depends on the depth of the water in mm -hmm. Utah at the time. And it's a very salty lake. So it's a work that really is certainly part of the environment, but also interacts and changes the environment in important ways. So you could also maybe categorize it under the category of process art because it's something that is forever changing. You know, he had one idea of it. But then there are things that act upon it and will change it for, you know, as long as it's there. It's made of things that are so durable, though. One gets a sense of it existing you know, beyond human life. Mm. Right, and it has such a basic shape as well. Mm -hmm. He's interested in some ancient examples of prehistoric land art mounds that mm -hmm. have been found in America and elsewhere. And it's sort of inspired by that somewhat abstract quality of a lot of those. The idea that your vision of it right now is you see it as a totality. When you're in it, of course, you're only right. experiencing it in right. this very, very different way and seeing partial aspects of it. Yeah, what interests me is that you can go into it mm -hmm. and, and walk through it. Right, usually you're not supposed to touch it. the art. No, right. <laughs> I like that idea of touching it and being inside it. He liked it too, yeah. And um, of it's course, fun. it makes it fun. Yeah, and you had to, he had to use a lot of construction tools, massive trucks to drive the rubble down, and um, also to employ a lot of people. So it really mm -hmm. destabilizes our idea that the artist Just is an creator. individual, right. a single person who is the mastermind. I mean, of course, he did come up with the scheme, mm -hmm. but he never could have realized this alone. Right, and that's such an important idea now. Things are can be made by groups of people, by mm -hmm. factories of people that the artist can employ. Right, and maybe he's going back also to what he thinks ancient art right. was like, that it was not done by a single genius artist, but yeah, rather was, was communal. A, a communal thing and then was sort of left open for everyone to interact with. Mm -hmm.